In this tutorial, we're going to take the model that we created in the previous tutorial. If you missed that, you can simply click on it in the related video section of the tutorial browser, and you can go ahead and see how we created this model you can see on screen now. What we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to show you an in-depth look at how we're going to create the toolpath to create this as if we were going to create it on a CNC machine. So, first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and close this file down. And then I'm going to go ahead and open an existing file. I'm going to navigate my way through the video tutorials folders and I'm going to find my way to the Fleur de Lis files and I'm going to open the Fleur de Lis underscore 3D underscore model. Click that and click open. And this is the 3D model. If I just put this into arranging the windows vertically, and you'll see that we do have the 3D model, which is what we created in the previous session, along with the vectors that we used to create the model. Now, to make our toolpaths more efficient, what we're going to need is a vector boundary to limit the actual machining of the toolpath to a particular uh, limit boundary, and that's normally the actual outside of the actual model itself. Now, when creating uh, the model, we actually had a vector which we'd created already. So we've got the actual vector boundary which we need for the toolpath in stage, so we can literally go straight over to the toolpath tab. How we do that is simple, we just simply click on this arrow here and that will switch us over to the toolpath tab. Now before creating any toolpath we should always make sure that we check the material setup. Not only that, but we need to uh, position the model within the material block that we have. Let's go ahead and click on the set button. And what we're going to do is first of all just double check the thickness of material that we're using. So I'm going to be using a 3 quarter inch uh, material, so I'm just going to verify that that is the value that's set there. Currently the XY datum position is set in the center. For positioning purposes, when I come to line up where I want the toolpath to start from, I'm actually going to change this XY datum position to be in the lower left. As I find this, for me, makes it easier to align where I want the toolpath to start from on my material block. So I'm just going to change that like so. The Z0 position, I'm going to set off the material surface and I'm going to set the model position in the material a slight gap uh, below the actual top surface of the material. Now the reason I'm going to do that is because if I'm using wood for instance, wood is renowned to change in height dependent on obviously the temperatures and climate that it is in at that present time. So I'm going to imagine that I'm going to be using wood, so I'm going to set this slightly under the material block by five hundredths of an inch, like so. Next is to set the rapid Z gaps above material. So the clearance setting is the setting that we are going to specify, which is when the tool comes out of the material and then moves, traverses around the block and then plunges back into another part of the toolpath. So that just needs to avoid any obstacles, so clamps that may be holding down your material block. And the plunge value is basically the height above the material it will st stop at before plunging in to that cut. So these are both set at the same value, at a quarter of an inch. And the home start is going to be at x0, y0, which is going to be the bottom left hand corner. And the z gap above material, where it starts from, is going to be a quarter inch, which is the same as the plunge value. Once we've got all that, just simply press OK. And we can start by creating our first toolpath, which is going to be a roughing toolpath. So all we need to do is go up to this icon here and then click on that and that will then open up that roughing machining toolpath for us. Now the first option that it gives us is to select our tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the tool database like so. And then from my tool database I'm actually going to select a quarter inch end mill. So I'm just going to select that from the imperial end mills. Just go a quick check over the cutting parameters and then press OK like so. And then the next option is to select our machining limit boundary. Now we have various options here. We can select either the model boundary, the material boundary, or a selected vector, or even a selected level. Now for this, we're going to use the selected vector. Now that we can see that I have got the uh, most outer oval selected at the moment, so I don't need to reselect it. The next option is to specify a boundary offset. Now we only really need this if the outermost part of our object that we are cutting has a round surface, as we will want the tool's radius to follow that curve all the way around. If we didn't specify a boundary offset, the tool's center will stop as it hits that vector boundary and leaving the curve unfinished. 
So to get a complete cut from our tool, we will need to allow it to go past the boundary by at least the tool's radius. We also need to take into account here the machining allowance, uh, which is the fine skin of material which is left on for the finishing tool to actually carve away. So I plan on leaving three hundredths of an inch of material as the machining allowance, plus the radius of the quarter inch tool, which leaves us roughly around about 0.16 of an inch. So I'm just going to type that in there, and then also ensure that we do have three hundredths of an inch left in our machining allowance. Now the next option is to choose the strategy which we're going to choose for the roughing toolpath. We have two options, the Z-level roughing strategy which is basically like a 2D pocket which will go down in stages. Each stage is equal to the past depth of the tool and it will basically just try and carve out as much material as it can uh, with regards to the diameter of the tool all the way down to three hundredths of an inch above the actual material. The three raster option again abides by the same rules so it'll only go down as far as the past depth that you set on the tool parameters itself but instead of going down in like a 2D pocket fashion for each layer trying to remove as much uh, material as possible the 3D raster actually follows the shape of the objects that it's passing through so essentially you will remove more material with a 3D raster but it also will take longer as well because it's virtually the same as doing a finishing toolpath uh, but leaving that machining allowance on and you're obviously using a larger tool. So for this example I'm actually going to choose the Z-level roughing strategy. I'm going to raster in the X-axis and I'm going to profile last. So we can move down then to the next option where we can choose to ramp the plunge moves. Now this rather than plunging the tool directly vertically into the material, we can actually take a zigzag fashion over the distance which we specify. This just alleviates the pressure of the face of the tool. So if we wish we could actually specify one of those. I'm not going to specify one here, so I'm just going to go down and call this 3D roughing and then we can go ahead and press calculate and preview. So I'm just going to calculate that toolpath and you'll see straight away that we've been placed into the preview toolpath form. Now you can see that the toolpath is currently selected, as you can see we do have all the lines representing our toolpath here. And as it's selected we can go ahead and just press the preview selected toolpath. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to turn that speed up slightly so you can see what it's doing. So you can see it's going down each layer at the depth specified as the past depth on the tool. And you'll see that we've now got the finish of our roughing toolpath, like so. So what we need to do now is simply just create a 3D finishing toolpath. So let's go ahead and close the preview toolpath form. It's going to go into the icon next to the roughing toolpath called the 3D finishing toolpath. Let's click on that. And then what we need to do is just simply, again, first of all, select our tool that we wish to use. So it's going to go into the tool database and I'm going to choose an eighth inch ball nose. So I'm just going to press OK on that. And then again, the machine limit boundary is going to be the selected vector. We do still have that current vector still selected, and we still now have an option to choose a boundary offset. Now, this time, as we're using a smaller tool, we only really need to offset it at the radius of the ball nose tool itself, which is roughly about 0 0.0625 of an inch, so 1 16th. I may just want to do it slightly larger, so I'm just going to put in 8 hundredths of an inch as the boundary offset. The next options are basically the machining strategy, which we're going to choose for the finishing machining toolpath. And we have two options. So we have the offset strategy, which is currently selected. And that basically starts out with a spiral fashion from the dead center of the uh, model that we're going to be uh, machining. It'll start and it'll go out in a round fashion. Now this will be good for this particular job because obviously our border is round and it will obviously help with the finished look of that product. The fact that we're going to be using a round tool is going to follow the exact pattern of that border shape. The other option available to us is a rastering strategy. Now as the icon depicts, it's basically going to send the tool from side to side at the angle that we specify and moving slightly over at the step over distance and again going back following the shape of the model that we've selected to machine. So the best strategy here for this particular model would be the offset strategy as it will complement the round shapes and border very nicely. 
The next option is to choose the cut direction, whether that be climb or conventional, which is basically clockwise or anti-clockwise milling. There are benefits to both of these, so it's definitely worth researching which method would be suited to yourself best. There is information regarding this in the documentation. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this as climb milling. The last option in this section is whether to specify a step of over retract. This basically means once the tool has finished its cut for that particular pass, do we want to retract the tool out of the material cutting surface, move over to the step over distance, and then plunge back into material for the next pass? This will basically eliminate the straight line cut which may or may not be visible depending on the tool, the diameter, and the step over selected. Now this will add time onto your toolpath as the machine will start cutting momentarily as it does this, but if you find yourself having this visible step over, then this option would be the cure. And obviously we just specify a very minute amount to eliminate as much time as possible. So I'm just gonna leave that as zero zero at the moment. I'm just gonna call this 3D finish. And I'm just gonna put in some information about that tool. So an eighth ball nose like so and then press calculate and then we can go ahead and preview that in the preview toolpath form. So now we're in the preview toolpath form and the toolpath is selected we can go ahead and preview that. I'm going to select the draw tool option so you can see what it's doing. So you see as it said it starts from the center and it works out in a circular fashion the same shape as the actual model itself and that will give a better finish to the round objects and the border shape itself. So this is what it looks like so far, and as you can see, it's looking very nice. So the last thing that we need to do is really give it a cutout pass so we can actually get it off the machine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press close on the preview toolpath form. And what I'm going to do with the vector selected for our cutout pass is go into the profile toolpath. And the first option asks us where we want to start our cut. So I wanna start on the top surface of the material, so that's going to be zero, 0, and we want to cut down to the full thickness. Now, it does say three quarters of an inch there, but if we ever need to just quickly access that, we can just press the letter Z and the equals key on the keyboard, and that'll bring up that value for us. Next is to choose our tool. So I'm gonna go into the tool database, and I'm gonna select the quarter inch end mill tool, like so, and press OK. And you'll see at the moment it's saying that we have six passes to complete that cut. Now, we may wish to actually edit the pass depth for this particular toolpath or even for the tool itself. If I go into the edit options, we can edit the pass depth here so we can actually decrease the amount of passes or we can actually go into this option here where we go into the edit passes form where we can be very specific about each pass depth that we want. So let's imagine that I wanted to have just three equal passes. All I need to do is press clear all passes, set the number of passes here to three, set passes, okay, and each pass now is set to a quarter inch at a time. The next option is to machine the vectors. Now we want to machine the outside of the vectors so we're not to uh, damage any of the 3D tool pathing that we've already done to this model, and we obviously want to cut the model out. You can choose again the cut direction, climb or conventional, and you can also give an allowance offset if you want to just take that slightly out or in of that model boundary, but we don't as we want to cut out the exact model that we can see. Next, we have an option where we can set a separate last pass. What this does essentially is offset all passes by the amount specified in this box bar the last pass, where the last pass will actually cut to the parameters specified above. In our case, it would cut exactly to the outside of the selected vector. Now this is good if you suffer from tool marking from each pass down on the cutout pass, and this will basically alleviate any hand finishing once it comes off the machine. So I'm actually gonna take advantage of this. I'm just gonna specify a very small uh, offset allowance here, so 100th of an inch. And you can also choose to reverse the direction of the actual cutout pass. So if we've chosen climb, it would actually then reverse that to conventional on the actual last pass. I'm just going to leave that option unchecked. And I'm going to go on to the next option, which is going to add some tabs to secure our part in place. As I'm going to imagine, we don't have a vacuum hold down system or any clamps that are going to hold the part in place. So I'm just going to add the tabs checkbox and we're going to specify a length of 
half inch and a thickness of the tabs to be 0.15 of an inch. Now here I'm going to choose to actually activate the 3D tabs. Now the normal tabs are rectangular and that causes the tool to retract up a little, do a cut and then plunge back down into the material. Whereas the 3D tabs are triangular tabs as you can see depicted by this icon here and they basically will just ramp up and then ramp down so there's not as much stoppage time as there would be with normal rectangular tabs so this will also in increase efficiency so with that checked I'm just going to go into the edit tabs option and I'm going to choose a constant number of four and just press add tabs and you'll see that that will place those tabs equally around our vector and I'm actually happy with those positions so I'm just going to go ahead and press close there and then I'm going to scroll down and see the other options that are available to us. So the first option that we have in this selection box here is to add a ramp. Now a ramp is going to be basically rather than plunging vertically down into the material we'll have a number, a number of options to choose from. So we'll have a smooth or zigzag or a spiral type ramp which we can actually get the tool to slowly get down to that pass depth we require. The next option is leads. Now what leads are, are basically a cut outside of the actual normal vector that we've selected for the profile toolpath and it'll basically start away from the vector itself and then cut into, dependent on the actual length and the type of lead that we've specified here, it will start that amount away from the actual final cut and it will cut into slowly, slowly bringing the tool down to the actual pass depth and then it will do that pass depth for that particular cut and it will carry on and so forth and it will do a lead for every single pass. Now the other options are just the ordering, now because we've only got one vector selected this uh, doesn't really mean much for us nor does the start at point as we're not going to be too bothered about where we're going to start the cut from and the sharp corners option is only really for anything that's square. Now because I have selected to do a separate last pass, we're keeping the tool away from the final cutting surface until the very last pass as to avoid tool marking in between passes. And because of this, the software will not include any leads or ramps to the final pass, so in this instance I am not going to add any leads or ramps to this toolpath. All I need to do now is simply just give this a name, so I'm just going to call this profile cutout, like so. I may want to add some information about the tool. So a quarter inch end mill and then press calculate like so. And then all I need to do is hit preview to preview the selected toolpath. And you'll see the triangular 3D tabs which have been added to each of the corners of our fleur de lis. And that should minimize the time down a little bit of the final toolpath in. So all that's left to do now is simply save out our toolpath. So we can go into the save toolpath form and if and only if we've got a tool changer could we actually output all these toolpaths at the same time but we need to make sure that the output all visible toolpaths to one file is selected and then we can go ahead and select each one of those. If we don't have a tool changer we'll have to output these each uh, one at a time so I'll just deselect that option, select the toolpath to be saved, select our post processor most appropriate for our CNC or control software and then just simply save the toolpath. Now, as with any project that we work on, it's always good to save our work. So I'm just going to go ahead and press File and Save. And with that completes this tutorial. So, thanks very much for watching.